Luke chapter 23. Now previously, we read about Jesus before the Sanhedrin. Beaten. Abused. That was in the middle of the morning. He's had supper. He's going to the garden. He's been arrested. The cock is crowing. It's 6 a.m. sunrise. 23. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto the whole what? You mean it just, just wasn't just a few high priests and it was a multitude of people that brought Jesus to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar. Well, there's two lies. And we have recorded by a tax collector that Jesus paid his taxes. So, let me stop right there and make another tax note here. I have been involved with taxes. It's been part of my career. My career right now is semi-working with taxes. You better not be able to have the heathen come up and say, we charge you with tax evasion by not paying taxes at all. Well, you can say, well, the government gives us, you know, deductible. The government gives us, you know, we're tax-free. And yet Jesus himself paid taxes, okay? End of matter. Shut up. You lose. Jesus told Peter to go for a fish, grab the coin, and pay the taxes. He did not have to pay the tax. Remember, Peter said, hey, we don't have to pay. But he says, at least I offend the people. Go get that coin and pay our taxes. So the option of paying, Jesus paid. He even called the tax collector to be amongst his group. And it's funny how he didn't make Matthew the, the, the treasurer. He made Judas the treasurer. You ever think about that one? The tax collector was more faithful than the treasurer. Did you get that one? We don't have a gospel of Judas, the treasurer. We have a first gospel of the new, we call the New Testament, the, the gospel of Matthew, the tax collector. How do you like that one? Okay. Then we have Mark, we don't know nothing about, but as apostle, then we have Luke, the physician, and we have John, the beloved disciple. Forbidding to give tribute to Caesar. They think, okay, now before Pilate, this is going to be the charges of all charges. Saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Well, he's the king. So, all right, this is the charges laid before Pilate. He's perverting the nation against Rome. He's not paying taxes to Rome by perverting the nation of Rome. And he's setting himself as king over Caesar. You see the three charges? He's upsetting the Jewish. No. He's upsetting the Roman nation. These guys are liars. I thought we heard out of his own mouth he declared to be God. What happened to that accusation? Pilate wouldn't care who this guy was. He'd just be another god on the, on the knick-knack paddywhack shelf. So you're not going to bring that. So we'll bring the charge of accusation of a lie. He's going to upset the Roman government. You know, Jesus will upset the Roman government at the second advent, not the first. So you see what Satan did? He put the charge upon Jesus one advent too early. Jesus will upset the Roman government when he comes back on horse. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king? <laughs> the Jewish said, A king. Pilate said, The king. I'm very convinced that Pilate had something about Jesus. You put all four gospels together with, with Pilate and the conversation that he had. Pilate was convinced. He was just a wimp. He feared the people. He feared his position. But he didn't fear his wife. He says, Doug King of the Jews. <laughs> Look at how it does. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this in one night. Excuse me, people. He's not upset in the Roman government. He's upset in you, the Jews. 
He's your king. We still got Caesar. And he answered him and said, Thou sayest. He's not breaking a law. Perversion was not a crime in Rome. You know, he's perverting the nation. That wasn't a crime. But oh, if he has such authority of the king, and Pilate said, as far as king of, of Rome, he's the king of the Jews. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. Number one. <coughs> <clears throat> that didn't work he's innocent by the Roman government Pilate said as far as perverting the, the nation forbidding to give tribute and making himself a king Pilate said I find no fault in him that's recorded and I guarantee that is probably recorded somewhere in the Roman books yet to be found. Before the Jewish multitude and as a Roman leader, it has been recorded, number one, that there's no fault that Jesus tried to overthrow anything during the first advent. Someone would be taking notes on this trial. We just haven't found them yet, or if we found them, they got them buried somewhere. But Luke records it. John records it. Matthew, I think, records what goes on. So let's get number one, a soap authority of the government, overchanging, making, mocking the President of the United States. Jesus is innocent. How about you, Baptist? And they were more fierce, saying, he stirs up the people teaching throughout all Jewry, which means Jew, beginning from Galilee to this place. Now the charge is he's teaching. And when Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the men were of Galilean. Now let's run back to 22 real quick, 59. Chapter 22, 59. And about the space of one hour after another, confidently affirming, saying of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. Galilean. So it was remarkably known of Jesus' and disciples where they came from. They came from the Sea of Galilee, came from Nazareth. So Pilate's like, oh boy, I'm going to get him off my hands. I don't want this. He doesn't want to deal with the Jews. And like I said, I'm persuaded for a thing that he, he knows something. Or I'm full. Now, as soon as he knew that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at that. How convenient. Pilate wasn't going to do anything with Jesus, so Herod just happened to be in Jerusalem. Do you see the means of Pilate getting saved? If Pilate won't do it, Herod will be too happy to do it. Something happened to Pilate that brought Jesus back in his hands to condemn Jesus to the cross. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad. For he was delirious to see him for a long season. Why? He, Jesus was walking around the entire land of Israel, wasn't he? Was it, didn't the Bible say in Luke that he would send out his disciples before he came? His desires, he so, he would have found word that Jesus is coming to town. Somewhere. He was the ruler. He could have sent out he could have sent out centurions and say, Hey, can you bring Jesus to me? Remember the centurions? Remember how wonderful they were? Most of them knew Jesus. Sure, whatever how they would address Herod, sir, whatever. Yeah, we'll go get him. I'll be more than happy to go get Jesus. You all know what he did to me. I'll get him. But see. Let's read it further. Because he had heard many things of him. The news is spreading about his own centurions. For he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. He wants a sideshow. 
He wants a circus performance. He wants a a, a, a a Bible. He wants a balloon. He wants a bozo button. He wants Jesus to put on a three ring circus. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Do something for it. Show me a sign. Do a healing. Talk in tongues. Da, 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 da. Do a shy show for me. He wanted to be entertained by Jesus. And wanting to be entertained by Jesus, he gets nothing. Learn that. Get that, church aid. <laughs> then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. Because he wanted entertainment, Jesus did not even say one word to him. Did you get that? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why I say if you want to entertain people for salvation, it don't work because Jesus doesn't talk. How's that for a scary thought? This guy wanted entertainment and Jesus never said one word to him. Okay, be very careful what you do. And the chief priests and the scribes stood familiarly accusing him. Man, they're not giving up. You see how much anger Jesus has caused these guys? By what? Let, let, let's look over how Jesus really made these guys mad. He taught the way of God rightly. He healed people he brought people back to life he spoke truth he spoke the way of God and did he ever yet turn the people away from the Pharisees only speaking the truth about them what other charges could they bring upon him God he's God isn't that what the nation of Israel wanted and was supposed to want? God, the Messiah? Here he is! Crucify him! Get rid of him! We hate him! Were they really looking for the Messiah? Absolutely not. They are angry. And Herod with his men of war, that's a side note. These weren't wimps. Men of war set him at naught and mocked him and arraigned him in gorgeous robe that's the purple robe that hollywood make he didn't wear a purple robe the roman government put the purple robe on him and i think john says that they took it off him and put his own raiment on him and brought him to the cross and stripped him naked and shot dice for it be careful what hollywood says about the bible See what the Bible says about the Bible. And sent them again to Pilate. So they dress Jesus in purple and mock him as king. And they carry him from Herod back to Pilate again. Now you know Pilate's upset. Pilate's like, hey, I got rid of him. Pirate, he's your problem. He's no longer mine. Now he's standing before Pilate in purple. The one that they say was up in authority of the government. And he said the king of the Jews. Okay, he's the king of the Jews, Pilate. Here he is in purple. I think God's working on Pilate's heart. And Herod with his men of war set him at not, nothing. No regard. And mocked him and reigned him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. Isaiah 53 3. The same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at enmity between themselves. So Pilate sends Jesus over to Herod because he hated Herod. But over Jesus in the trial made them friends again. Oh, isn't that nice? And I think this is where Pilate's downfall was. He made friends with the wrong friend. Pilate could not sing, what a friend I have in Jesus. He could sing, what a friend I have in Herod. That's the wrong one. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people. So there's Jesus and Pilate all by himself. Pilate calls in the accusers. You ever wonder if Pilate just ever just spent that moment with Jesus alone and say, come on, sit down. 
let's, let's put those people away. I've heard something about you being God. I've heard something about you. Will you explain to me? You think Jesus would have turned them down? It would have been a great conversation that afternoon. Instead of seeking a chief priest, instead of becoming friends with Herod, if he would have sat down with Jesus and received Jesus and say, Jesus, I don't understand what's going on here. Remember that one guy who had the son was a lunatic? He said, Jesus, help my unbelief. If Pilate only said that at this moment. When Jesus comes in front of you, don't make friends with anybody else. Said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me, this man, and one that perverted the people. Okay, that's what the first accusation. And behold, I have examined him before you. You say he perverted the people. Have found no fault in this man touching those things where ye accuse him. Number two. Jesus, in American law, oh man, as soon as I said that, it went right out my head. Oh, what's that? You can't be twice twice. Double jeopardy. Jesus would not have been tried again under American law. This is double jeopardy. But both trials comes out as no fault. Innocence. Nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy as death is done unto him. Number three, no guilt. No guilt of Herod, no guilt twice of Pilate. <clears throat> Isn't that interesting? If a judge were to tell you three times you're innocent, but watch this. I will therefore chastise him. I will chastise him and release him. For what? Being innocent? You see what a pain in the neck these Jews were? All right, listen, he's innocent, but I'll beat the heck out of him. Would that make you happy? <laughs> Isn't that just sick? And you know what? If Jesus wasn't who he was, let's just say Jesus was a normal person here. We're talking about, let's say we were talking about Barabbas, okay? They would say, yeah, okay, that'd make us happy and let him go. These Jews were a nonsense nuisance to the Roman government. We'll do whatever we can. Just get them off our backs and get them to shut up. You don't believe me? Look at the attitude God had with them in the wilderness to Moses. Moses stepped aside. I'm going to kill them. I am just going to kill them. And, God, and Moses would have to use the word of God on God to keep them Jews alive. The griping and complaining that they did in the wilderness, they're doing it to the Roman government. And the governor's like, I'm, that's what kind of people the Jews are. And yet God says, love them. And God said, pray for them. And God said, witness to them. And yet, the Bible says, they are our enemy. You know who's passing all these laws, most of all these laws about against Christians, against Bible, against prayer? Most of them will be Jews. Most of the conspiracies are about Jews. But they are God's people no matter what. So I'll chastise them for being innocent. Imagine walking up to American corporate. I find you not guilty. $200, please. Wait a minute, Your Honor. You said what it is. Why do I got to pay $200? Just pay the $200 and go. You fight and get a lawyer. Let's see what Jesus does. For of necessity... necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. I'll beat them. I'll tell you what. You know what? You guys have a law. This is the time of season that as a president steps out of office, you pardon somebody. Did you get that? Here's a ruler of a nation going to pardon somebody at a particular time of the year. Now, you know what Pilate's thinking? <coughs> For sure, they're going to let Jesus go. Because the guy I'm thinking about right now, he is condemned. He is guilty. I have a guilty party here, and I have an innocent party. They will get rid of Jesus. That's what he's thinking. 
All right, so let's listen out. For of necessity, he must release one unto them at, at the feast. So through the gospel, we learn there's Barabbas and there's Jesus. Guess who had to die to fulfill the scriptures? He died according to the scriptures. So according to the scriptures, Barabbas had to go home. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas. Now Pilate is in cold sweat. He's shivering. That did not work. Bring him to Herod didn't work. You know, if you're lost and somebody brings you to Jesus and Jesus keeps ending up in your lap, don't keep getting in the way. God is working on Pilate. Jesus is still there. The innocent one. The sinless one. Who's going to die your execution that you may be saved. For uh, No. For who... No, this is for Abbas. Who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murderer was cast into prison sedition murder and in jail guilty death penalty who do you want barabbas or jesus we'll take the death penalty person so who do the catholics and all satan's people go march at a prison when they're about to execute somebody for their crime, they will go out there and protest, say, thou shalt not kill. How do you like that one? That's in the Bible too. People protesting a death penalty is in the Bible. This time, the death penalty went to the one that was innocent and sent home to guilty. How's that? Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus. What number are we up to? Four or five now? If he's willing to release Jesus, he's saying the guy is innocent. Spank again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! <coughs> and he said unto him the third time, Why? What evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. Three official times were up to four or five statements that puts Jesus innocent. Jesus was sinless according to the Roman government. And they were instant with loud voices. I mean, they didn't even bat an eye. They didn't take a breath instantly, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. John says that the chief priests provoked the people. Here is a religious organization promoting a riot over the sinless one, the Son of God. To be killed. You want to run to religion? Judas is going to run to these same people to try to get forgiveness. You think he's going to get it? They want a innocent man dead. Judas, you're out of luck. Because you're guilty. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. There goes Pilate down the tubes. There goes America down the tube. They're giving in to the people. Of the people, for the people, by the people. The mass of people, the multitudes, won. And he released unto them him that for the sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired. 
but he delivered Jesus to their will. Well, it was your will too now, buddy. I'm going to end right here sticking up for you because you, you could have. Even the centurion protected Paul and drove him away from the crowd. Remember that? And then we cut off before Paul. Or license, Paul, I'll give you license to speak. Er, tomorrow, Paul. Relax. It's an axe joke amongst our family. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after mocking Jesus. Another place said he's a Canaanite. Having a black man carry your cross with humility in these times. We're not talking about 2016. We're not talking about America. And also it's a warning too to the public citizens. Don't you do. Well, can't say don't you do what Jesus did because Jesus didn't do nothing. But what would be what would be God's point of view of having this man who did not belong in the land of Israel? That Israel was supposed to chast out in the book of John. But what would be the statement that God has this man carrying Jesus' cross? You know how many people witnessed this this, this afternoon here in the Bible? There goes Jesus. There goes his cross. Don't you tell me Jesus didn't die on the cross. Look at all these people that witnessed it. Even this one cursed man of Canaan could say, I carried that cross of Jesus. This man of Canaan, Simon, will be called to the great white throne judging for all those who did not believe that Jesus died on that cross. He'll step up and say, Lord God, what do you want me to say? Will you please tell your testimony. Lord, all I can say was, I carried that cross that I saw him die on. Okay, thank you. That's all you need to say. Next. And then start calling one by one all the people who were there when Jesus died as witnesses to people today who don't believe it. Simon is an eternal witness. I don't know if he's saved or not, but he's an eternal witness that Jesus did have a cross. You know how you knew that? He had to carry the sucker. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that remind you? Oh, gee. <clears throat> remember, the, remember, the, remember the family that sat there outside the porch and said, Hey, we gave our Jesus. We gave our, we gave our ass to Jesus. What about that man with the, that owned the upper room? Hey, I gave my room for him and his disciples last night. What about Simon? I had to carry that thing. I bet you it was heavy. I don't think there would be a nice little, little cross to carry. I bet you this would be something the guy... I always imagine, because they never say what kind of wood. I can always imagine it would have splitters to make it worse. Can you imagine being nailed to a thing that you got splitters from? Imagine Jesus. I, I don't know about the sprinters. I, I, that's what I imagine. But here he is. Here's a witness. A cursed man who does not belong in the land given to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, carrying the cross as they're in Jerusalem going out the gate. Remember Hebrew said he, he died outside the gate? And there followed him a great company of people, witnesses. And of women, they're always following Jesus, which also be railed and laminated for him. Lam laminated, not laminated, they didn't laminate him, lamented him. So Jeremiah writes a whole book. There's a chapter in Ezekiel about lamenting. And Jesus turning unto them, he's in pain, he's in agony, he's bleeding, his back is ripped open, he has time to stop and say, Daughter of Jerusalem. Weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Uh oh, remember, he's already prophesied this city is going to fall. 70 AD, it will fall. From 70 AD to 2016, look what this, all has happened over there. How many Jews have died in the church age, are in hell, because they will not believe the Messiah? <clears throat> and yet Jacob's troubles coming for behold the days are coming into which they shall say blessed are the barren and the womb, wombs that never bear 
and the paps which never gave suck. You know, that reference runs you back to Matthew 24 and Luke 21. You know what Jesus is talking about when he tells these stories? Weep about your children. Jacob's trouble. He's marching right off to, you know what he's saying? I'm going to that cross and boy, is your nation going to get it. You're putting me on that cross. You're going to nail me to that cross and God's going to whip your behind using Satan. Jacob's trouble. The seven years tribulation of that Jew is because of what they just did, what they're doing to Jesus right now. And yet, this time it's called the church age, they can repent and get right and avoid hell and avoid all that. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. That's the second advent passage. When it all is dark and Jesus is coming. If they do these things in a green tree, life, what shall be done in a dry tree, death? And there were also two other malefactors. Some people say there were others. The Bible said there were two, there were three. The one in the middle died for me. Let him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, the skull. So when you got a church that is named Calvary something church, Baptist community, whatever, do you realize you are naming your church the skull? You know what the number one tattoo is? Do you know what Satanists use as one of their forms of worship? You know what a number one decoration for Halloween is? Do you know what it's pictured mostly with, with, with a witch with her enchantments and her black cat? Well, skull too, I was thinking. Usually they got a skull somewhere there in the scene. A skull is not really a good picture for a Christian in a church means you're dead well then again for the church age I guess that would be a perfectly good symbol Calvary I'll say community church I don't know why the Lord want me to say that but I'm going to Calvary community church if you would put translate would mean the skull Calvary, the skull community church is that really what you want well God 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 too and, and John which means skull. But we're we're honoring the death of Jesus. All right. What if we what if Jesus were to die today? Would would you the lethal weapon, the lethal needle, Baptist Church? Would you do that? Would you wear around your necklace a electric chair? Would you put up on the back of the wall behind the preacher, uh, was it not nine guns, five guns, where's for a shooting? That firing squad why are we more honored to the death device that Jesus died on rather than the one that died on the cross but just want to let you know that Calvary means skull so you can go change your church there they crucified him <clears throat> and the malefactors guilty of a crime that's what the word means notice how the Holy Spirit used the right word Jesus in the middle is completely innocent by four accusations of Pilate. But we're going to put Jesus with malefactors, guilty ones. Why? Because Isaiah 53 said he was numbered with the transgressor. Isaiah 53 is now being played out before your eyes. We couldn't just say thieves. I know one of the Gospels says thieves, but Luke says malefactor. He uses those big words because he's a doctor. And when you run the meaning of those words, it puts them as guilty. Isaiah 53 is now playing out. One on the right hand and the other on the left. So that means Jesus was in the middle. And people play with that all the time. Now, which thief got saved? The one on the right or the one on the left? We have no idea. 
We like to think the one on the right got right and the one on the left left Jesus for all eternity, but that'd be good for preaching. But as far as what we know, we don't know. But we also know that they were close enough that they could hear each other. Remember, they're, they're dying in agony, and that dying thief carries on with a conversation with a dying Savior. And it can be heard audibly. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them. This is the, this is the cry of the Father, the third prayer to the Father recorded. Fourth prayer, excuse me. He prays three times in the garden. Father, if, if this could pass, now he's on the cross. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Do you know what that implies? What did Jesus try to tell his disciples as we got closer and closer to this time? Yes. And he's He's also telling them that those scribes, those Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, has no idea what the Bible says. They're ignorant of the scriptures. That's the only charge. That they don't know what they're doing. If they known what they were doing, they would be standing around me right now praying to you too that this has to be done. They are sorry it has to be done, but it has to be done, laid by the foundation of the world. They would be here. They would remain to the third day to stay here and watch. But they're out there ridiculing Jesus. They don't know what they're doing, Father, but it has to be done. Remember we said in the garden, thy will be done, but Lord, they don't know what they're doing. Father, Yeah, you do err not knowing the scriptures. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. So let me be clean. Jesus is on that cross just as Adam and every baby born in this world. He is naked. Now don't tell me this Acts 20, 28 says that blood is God's blood. Jesus is God. Lying out there naked for all to see. Don't tell me Jesus wasn't a man. I'm going to be as clean as I could say it. There is God and there is man. His garments are lotteried, gambled. And the people stood beholding. And the rulers also with them derided him. These are the rulers of the nation. These are the ones that say, that's the Messiah. People cheer up. He's here. But we're sorry. Get that red heifer ready. Right? No, not these people. Saying, he saved others. Ooh. Isn't that a great re This guilty man saved others. They're condemning themselves with their big mouths. Let him save himself. So it's proper to say Jesus saves. If he be Christ, the chosen of God. If he be, they're, they're denying the Messiah charge. All right, Messiah, come off that cross and we'll believe you. If the Messiah came off that cross, you'd be burning in hell. Oh, you are burning in hell. If that Messiah came off the cross, your hope of every child born of a woman or a petri dish would be hell. And that's it. Don't go preach. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you'll be in hell. If he came off that cross like they wanted him to do. If he came off that cross like those elders spoke, we'd be all damned. John chapter 3 says we're not going to hell. We're condemned already. We are in hell. You got to be pulled out of hell. At that, Whatever that age is that you acknowledge that you are a sinner, you hid your sin, you, you hid that cookie, you knew that you had stolen a cookie, you think it's just, oh, just a cookie? 
You are now in the depths of hell. There's no more innocency. <clears throat> and the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. No one ever gave Jesus a drink of water. Mark that in the Bible. He comes to a woman at a well and give me a drink. She never gave him a drink. She brought him people, but never brought him a drink. Vinegar is his mocking. My wife works out in the garden. It's Florida. It's hot. She comes in. Oh, honey, will you get me a bottle of water? Sits down in her chair and I give her a bottle of vinegar. Well, you know? That's mocking. And saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. So they're mocking that Jesus is a king. The purple robe. The plaited thorny crown. The problem with the Romans is, ah, he's king. Ha, 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 ha. That's the problem the Romans have. And the superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek. <clears throat> Japheth. And Latin, ham. Latin is an African language it originated from africa ham and hebrew the jews who in the scriptures wrote that accusation the bible says pilate did i believe john said pilate wrote this and remember they questioned Pilate, why did you write that i have written what i've written that man wrote that sign that this is the king of the Jews for all nations of Noah's children to read. No, I mean, Noah. Pilate did not say press one for English. I'll put it in Spanish, English, in another language for you. What Pilate wrote, according, I believe it's the Gospel of John, was for anybody to walk by and read that and say, oh, that's the king of the Jews. I'm telling you, I believe Pilate was, but then again, he was damned. <clears throat> and one of the malefactors, now this is a story you do not find in the other Gospels. Let's, see, you got, let's try to finish. And one of the malefactors, a big doctory word, which were hanged, railed, scoffed on him saying if thou be christ save thyself and up everybody is scoffing and ridiculing jesus no one is on his side the romans the jewish now the thieves he is dying with no respect no love no one loved jesus Throw that in their face. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? Wait a minute. Hold on. You and I are both thieves. We have been condemned by the Roman government or the Jewish government. Had to be the Roman government to take that back. Because it's crucifixion. We have both been condemned by the Roman government. And we deserve to be here. That repentant thief stopped the mocking. And said wait a minute. He started thinking. His heart is starting to think. We indeed justly. Now look how that word justly is being used. That word is being used. We're just for this deed. But we're unjust. It is right for us to be dying on this cross. Is that an interesting way of using that word? For we receive the due reward of our deeds. We are guilty. We are sinners. Now watch this. This is important because there is so much debate about this thief on the cross. He has acknowledged to a lost man. Hey, we are both sinners. We deserve what we're getting. <clears throat> but this man, the one in the middle, Jesus, now watch this, 
has done nothing amiss. Herod, Pilate, and the repentant thief, and Judas, when he goes back to the priest, said, I have betrayed the innocent blood. What more witnesses do you know, need that Jesus is sinless? And also add the 11 disciples and Paul. I lost count how I many people said that Jesus is God. Because only God can be sinless, right? Throw the Jehovah Witnesses out the window. This dying thief just declared that Jesus has to be God because he's innocent. And then, watch this. He said unto Jesus, Lord, capital L. That capital L did not need to be there. That's not the first of the sentence. Jesus was the first of the sentence. He addresses Jesus as the Lord. Remember me when thou cometh into thy kingdom. Now, how on earth did he know that Jesus was a king? Go read what Pilate wrote. Did you know that Pilate's bumper sticker on the cross got someone saved that afternoon? Did you know that? You know how many Christians tell me bumper stickers don't work? Pilate's did. That thief looked at that cross and said, King of the Jews. Now, this maybe he's a Jew. I don't know. I have no idea. But he looks at Jesus and says, When you come into thy kingdom, will you remember me? Now, what does this thief have to believe in? Does he believe Jesus is going to get off the cross that afternoon? Absolutely not. He believes that Jesus is going to die and Jesus is going to get a kingdom. So he has to believe in the resurrected Christ. Look at that. And he read it off a bumper sticker that had one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven words. Do you remember another short message that was preached that got an entire city saved? Wasn't that Jonah preaching the Ninevites? You don't have to open your mouth much to be saved. What must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Look at that. And you could put that on a bumper sticker. A guy could get behind your car and say, and just think about how those words can go in his heart all day afternoon. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today you must be baptized. Absolutely not. Today you must join a church. Absolutely not. Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. They're on the cross. This thief got salvation. What was one of the key points of the salvation? He acknowledged that he was a sinner. To another man. With Jesus as the main subject. And then acknowledging the death, I don't know about a burial, I have no idea what's going to happen, but the death and the resurrected Jesus. And Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Which Jesus told this, I don't know if anybody else heard this, but he told that dying thief, when you go into Abraham's bosom, you'll see me walk across a gulf that you've never seen before. And I'll come set you free today. That tells you how long Jesus was in hell and how long it took him to get to Abraham's bosom. Today. It was about the sixth hour. And I think there's a discrepancy between Luke and, and John. John is Gentile time, I think it is. You have to look that one up. There's Jewish time and then there's the Roman time. The sixth hour. And there was darkness over all the earth unto the ninth hour. God can't see the sun taking on sin. So what do you think you're going to do with your sin? If God had to turn his eyes, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? What do you think God's going to do with your sins? When he forsook his son. You're going to just go marching through the gate past St. Peter and walk in there with all... I don't think so. I don't know what size Jesus takes in a foot, but that foot is going to cast your butt into hell. 
when Jesus became that sin, that cup he prayed about in the garden, God forsook him. The innocent one, the sinless one. That innocent lamb which take away the sin of the world. God forsook him. All the angels, everybody had to shut up. Turn off the lights. I don't want to see it. And the sun was darkened. And the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. Where John's gospel said, he's died. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, saying, Father, into thy hands I con con commend my spirit, body, soul, and spirit. The body's going to be the tomb. The spirit goes back to the Father. The soul goes down into hell. Having, thus, ha and having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God saying, certainly this man was, still is, but this is centurion, was a righteous man, number five of an innocent man that just died. How many more accounts do you need? Even after the death of Jesus, men are proclaiming that he's sinless. He's righteous. 2016, people are going out proclaiming the righteous, sinless Jesus Christ. How many witnesses has there been? And all the people that came together to that site, beholding the things which were done. Look at all the witnesses. Oh, Jesus, how do you know? Witnesses smote their breast in return. They never waited. And all his acquaintance, all the people that knew him, and the women that followed him from Galilee, stood afar off beholding the things. This was done in public. It was done in open. Jesus is preaching on the street. You know that? Up on the cross. Everybody's seeing. Everybody's witnessing. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor. And he was a good man and just. According to the Old Testament standards. The same had not consented to the council deed of it. He didn't show up when they wanted to put Jesus to death. He made himself absent on purpose. That's what the verse is saying. Every time they held counsel against Jesus, he purposely did not show up. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. Well, that's a big remarkable statement. The man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. He knows something. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a scepter that was hewed in stone, wherein never man before was laid. Man will be laying it again, but not Jesus. And that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew nigh. Preparing the lamb to be dead. So you have to hurry up and get home because you can't do no work. The women also which came with him from Galilee <coughs> followed after and beheld the sepulcher. You know what behold the sepulcher means? They knew where he died. They knew where he was buried. A witness. And how his body was lain. Because that's important. Because you know what's going to happen in three days and three nights? It's going to be an angel. And these women that came to the sepulcher early Sunday morning... They knew the body was there. They knew the stone was there. There was a seal in that stone. There was a Roman or Jewish, or if not both, guard at that tomb. They witnessed it before they went home to have the Passover. And when you pick up the next chapter, you read that it was all gone, including Jesus. And they returned, prepared spices and ointments at home. They gone home, 
They're working. <laughs> don't tell the scribes. Don't tell the Pharisees. But they're doing work on the Sabbath for Jesus. You know why? Because Jesus said it was okay. They're starting to follow Jesus now and not the Pharisees. They returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested on the Sabbath day according to the commandment, John 11, 39. So we got witnesses. We've got a dead Messiah. We've got a dead man. He's in a tomb. This is where the world re will remain. Lord willing, we will end in religion today. And Lord willing, we will pick up Christianity by the next chapter. A risen Savior. You can't say Catholics because they got a risen Savior and then you put them back in the, in the cross. Then you got a risen Savior, you put them back on the cross. You got a risen Savior, you put him back in the cross. Then he's born, then you got a risen again, then you got him dead, then he's born, he's risen, then he's dead. It's over and over every year. I got a risen Savior.